links. At Home and On the Move, a study of links movements, a joint project of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Park Service. A line of paw prints in snow. The snowshoe hare, a keystone species of the boreal forest, is the primary prey species for lynx. A lynx pounces for a hare. The relationship between snowshoe hares and lynx is well known. The movements of lynx, however, including dispersal, has not been well documented. One national park and five national wildlife refuges are collaborating on an interagency study of lynx movements. Using GPS collars, biologists can track the movements of lynx, which are captured mainly in cage traps. A CD spins on a pole in the snow. Visual attractants are used to capture their attention. An antenna is attached to a cage door. A radio monitor sends a signal if the cage door closes. Biologists working in the Kayakuk River Valley east of Gates of the Arctic National Park monitor traps along the Dalton Highway. Sometimes there is a false alarm, but this time they've caught a lynx. A lynx paces inside a cage in the snow. A pair of gloved hands prepares a syringe. Before it can be handled, the lynx is immobilized using 30 grams of the anesthetic telazole. The drug is administered into the rump muscle using a long stick. Another biologist distracts the lynx. A long stick pokes the lynx, which startles. Then, the lynx lays motionless in the cage. It usually takes about five minutes for the drug to take effect. Then, the lynx is gently removed from the cage for processing. A man removes the lynx from the cage and carries it in his hands to a blanket. The two biologists carefully wrap the lynx in the blanket from head to toe and close it with a drawstring. Body weight is measured first. This female lynx weighs 9.5 kilograms, or roughly 21 pounds. Ointment is applied to her eyes to prevent them from drying out. One biologist pats the lynx's head as the other applies eye drops. Next, a GPS collar is fitted around her neck. Both biologists supervise the attaching of the collar on the motionless lynx. Care is taken that the collar is neither too tight nor too loose, and that fur is not caught in it. Officially, the lynx is known by its sex and GPS number. The field team also gives the individuals that capture a nickname. This female lynx was named Lucy. Lucy's vital signs were monitored throughout the procedure. Lucy's body temperature, blood oxygen level, and heart rate were all within the normal range. Text, blood oxygen saturation, 93%. Heart rate, 142. Lucy's 16 breaths per minute was average for a lynx. One biologist uses a tape measure to measure Lucy's body. Lucy's girth, hind foot length, and other body measurements were taken to record her size. A biologist examines one of Lucy's paws. The other pulls up Lucy's upper jaw, exposing Lucy's teeth and undulating tongue. The lengths of her canines and ear tufts were also measured. Everything was carefully recorded, along with the GPS collar number and where she was caught. The effects of the drug start to wear off after about 30 to 45 minutes. Motor control begins at the head and works its way down the body. Once Lucy had regained better control of her movements, she was carried to a safe location and released. One biologist carries Lucy to an open patch of snow and crouches, lowering Lucy to the snow. Lucy trudges slowly through the deep snow. It was a few more minutes before Lucy gained better control of her legs. Lucy stands upright on her four legs and walks through the snowfield. Lucy fully recovered and biologists tracked her movements until her collar quit working after three years. Here in the Brooks Range, the data quickly revealed that lynx do not shy away from climbing mountains. And that lynx, at least males, have somewhat distinct territories that occasionally overlap. Female lynx often have territories that overlap with males. The pink dots are females, the blue are males. This animation shows a male lynx, Marshall, the green dot, and a female lynx, Margaret, the red dot. A 
A second female lynx, Missy, is later collared, showing up as the blue dog. At this point, Marshall and Margaret come together. We assume that this period of approximately six hours was a mating event. On a map, the red and green dot move closer as the blue dot stays at a distance. Margaret later gave birth to a litter of four kittens. On an elevation map, a single blue dot flits back and forth. Here we see Lucy as a blue dot moving around the landscape. The blue dot flits over to a lowland area. It is the latter half of May. The blue dot returns to an elevated section of the map, then descends into a second lowland area. Over time the blue dot covers less ground, flitting around a much smaller section of the map. It is now early June, and she has settled into a smaller range. The GPS data show Lucy making frequent trips out from one location. She apparently has kittens and is provisioning them with food. The blue dot flits around a single quadrant of the map, on the lowland side of an elevated area. Using the GPS data, biologists could locate Lucy's den and confirm that she was caring for five kittens. Photo, a green field is filled with trees, upright and fallen. Female lynx often choose to have their litters in areas of downfall, which provide shelter and cover for their kittens. The kittens are born in early June. The kittens nurse for four to five months, though they may start eating meat after one month. A kitten emerges from a hole in the field. By the end of June, the kittens are somewhat mobile, but remain at the den while their mother is out hunting for them. Two kittens gather close together. It is during this time that biologists hope to locate the den in order to tag the kittens. A biologist picks up a kitten. The ear tag will identify the kitten if it is recaptured later. GPS data has also shown us that lynx are not always as solitary as scientists had previously thought. In this animation, we see two adult females in the same area. They frequently cross paths and spend brief periods of time together. Later, they travel together almost continuously for another few months. Several dots scatter a map of Alaska and the Yukon. This animation shows lynx dispersing from their original capture area beginning in April of 2019. The dots scatter all across the land, with one dot reaching the northwest coast of Alaska on the Chukchi Sea. When dispersing, lynx travel about three times the distance per day than they do when staying within their home ranges. In the spring of 2020, Many lynx dispersed from the Kayakuk Dietrich River Valley. Between 2017 and 2022, we monitored the movements of 43 lynx, males and females, in equal number. Many have dispersed hundreds, even thousands of kilometers throughout Alaska and as far as British Columbia. We still have a few lynx on the air that we continue to monitor. By 2022, there were fewer lynx in the area. A snow hare hops alone through the snow. This was likely due to a decline in the local snowshoe hare population. A biologist uncages a lynx. We will continue to monitor lynx as long as the collars last to see how they fare during the low phase of the hare cycle. To see where they go and how far they roam. Text, credits. Pictured in videos or photos, in order of appearance, Claire Montgomery, UAF, Knut Shalon, UAF, Greg Breed, UAF. Videos and photos, Donaty Falco, NPS. GPS point locations maps, animation of Marshall, Margaret, and Missy, and animation of two female lengths, Knut Shalon, UAF. GPS animation of Lucy, Derek Arnold, UAF. Edited and narrated by Donaty Falco, NPS. Produced by the National Park Service.